Yeah, no. Oh, uh, you blurred your background. That looks better. So it looks better. <laughs> it looks intentional, at least. <laughs> All right. Are you ready over there, Eric? Okay. What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm. Yes, I am. I'm ready. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out what was in the wall. It's like bolts in the wall. Oh yeah. Those four little marks. Yeah. It's fine. I saw it on. Yeah, it's fine. This or may th that will probably make it into this video. I'm just telling you. Probably that's okay. I'm gonna <laughs> okay, right. I'm so ready. ready. Eric's ready. I'm ready. Okay. All right. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> well, hello everybody. Um, it's Jamie Davis here, and I've got a special guest. Um, I'll start by saying years ago we used to do a uh, Clayton Community Church podcast and life and um, pandemic took us out of it, but we are back. And so it would be an awesome opportunity to relaunch the Clayton Community Church podcast by introducing um, our newest pastor, additional pastor, not to be confused with Sean is gone and there's a new pastor. No, not that. We're not saying that. We're saying we have an additional pastor, Sion Edgerton. Am I saying that right? Ed you are. Edgerton. Edgerton. Yeah. Like Ed Edgerton. Like Ed Like Edgerton. Yes. And then the, there's a great mystery about your first name. You always say Sion like Dion. Yes, yeah, Sion like Dion but with a C oh, so or if you take like Celine Dion and smush it together. Yeah. So that is a very good way of explaining that. So that tells me that there was a time before you came up with that, that there was some confusion. So how did you stumble upon that? Oh my gosh. I've been called so many things. I actually walked across the stage at high school graduation as Sean. I was like, dude, the principal knows me. Why did he just read my name and say, Sean, it's not cool. Anyways, try to remember when I started the whole Sion as in Dion thing. I honestly don't remember, but there just came a point when finally I realized I need something to help people understand how to pronounce my name because it's a weird one. I get it. And the uh, Dion with a C stuck, it seemed to work. And so that's just what I use today. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That leads me to another question. Where did Sion come? Where did it come from in the first place? Like my my parents did. The, the, it was a popular thing with uh, with black people or black uh -huh. folk, as some call some of us call each other, that they would merge their names together. So like my little brother's name is Ja apostrophe Mark for James and Marcia. So Ja Mark. So uh -huh. where in the world did Sion come from? So Sion actually comes from Greek mythology. And uh, it's, a, it's a whole long story, really cool story from Greek mythology. But anyways, that whole particular story centers around a sailor and his wife. And my mom comes from a huge sailing family. She grew up on the water, loved it. And so just kind of always had an affinity for some of these old stories. Um, and when she found out she was pregnant with me, she was young. She was a teenager at the time. And, you know, by the grace of God, I'm here today. Um, but she didn't have to fight with anyone else. She was um, ended up being a single mom. So she had full reign over what she wanted to name me and decided that it actually comes from Halcyon. H-A-L-C-Y-O-N. And uh, she knew that she wanted that. She loved that story and she wanted that to be my name. And then she just split it into two parts. So if I was a boy, I was going to be Hal. If I was a girl, I was going to be Sion. And here we are today. Oh, cool. That is a really cool story. Yeah, I love it. It's not just a random name. That's really cool. Nope, it has a lot of meaning and significance. And, and the story itself is really cool too. So I love that there's that connection there. Um, but yeah, and you'll hear you'll hear Halcyon a lot in sailing terms. Um, it means calm and peaceful. So if you're familiar with nautical stuff, you hear Halcyon, and that's where Sion comes from. Oh, that's really cool. Well, that's a hey. perfect way to segue into um your upbringing, your childhood, wh wherever you want to start in the Sion story. Um, just so people, yeah. I'll say this too. Um, we've had a lot of questions ever since Sion came aboard with us a couple months ago. Well, actually, 
technically your position started just a few weeks ago, but uh -huh. we've been um, talking with you for a couple months and you've been attending the church since last year, I believe, mid year last year. Or showed up. You showed up in the spring. Okay. So it was sometime in like April or May. Okay. Okay. So yeah. it hasn't been very long. And so people are like, who is this lady <laughs> all of a sudden on stage? Um, and, and so we, we wanted to uh, create this in order for a lot of you to get to know her more. And you're not going to get this in a, hi, how are you doing at church on Sunday? So we're going to go like in deeper a little bit, just so maybe uh, more of you can have a kind of her history and where she came from and how she ended up with us. So, so how does the story of Sion start? So um, it was a dark and stormy night, October 18th, 1985. No, uh, actually it was October 18th, just so you guys know, it's my birthday, love to celebrate it. Um, yeah, so I was, like I said, uh, my mom was young, uh, single mom. I was kind of one of the oops stories and just really kind of beautiful, like by the grace of God, um, all sorts of aspects where it was pretty evident that God's hand was in my life from very, very early on. Eventually my mom did end up getting married. So I think I was four or five when she married my dad who legally adopted me. And so for all intents and purposes, that is my dad. Um, that's who raised me and that's who's always been there for me. And so there's a beautiful aspect of adoption in my story too. Um, and just, you know, my dad for me has been the closest representation, um, you know, on earth of understanding what a good and loving heavenly father is like who adopts us into his family. So that aspect of my story has always been really significant for me. I'm sure at some point I will end up preaching it because it's one of my favorite things to get to share and to really tie into the gospel story. Um, and he was military. So that means we moved a lot. We've lived everywhere, which is usually evidenced in my accent. Someone actually mentioned something about it this weekend. I don't remember what I said, but they mentioned how Southern it sounded, but then sometimes she's like, but then sometimes you sound like you're from the North. And I was like, yeah, we lived all over. So I had really eclectic, diverse upbringing. Um, we've lived, you know, North, South, East, West, and all over the place. Um, went to a lot of different churches. And so growing up, um, I have three younger siblings. So my mom and my adopted dad ended up having a few more kids. Um, and so that's, that's been a ton of fun, but uh, yeah, we were all over the place, pretty kind of traditional, you know, typical um, conservative Southern evangelical upbringing. I was raised in church, never really, we were attenders and we were pretty regularly involved, but ministry definitely wasn't something that I ever aspired to or expected or planned on. Um, we moved a lot. And then eventually when I was in high school, we ended up in Michigan. My dad transitioned from active duty military to government contracting. And so that put us in Michigan for a while, which is where I graduated um, high school and spent a couple years um, doing, you know, sort of the typical, like spent my whole life following all the rules and being the good, perfect Christian and ended up in a really burnout place spiritually with a lot of questions that weren't being answered by my faith tradition at the time. And so then spent a couple of years breaking all the rules and trying to figure out what I really believed for myself. And um, so, you know, I have that part of my story kind of typical. I know a lot of people share that same story in the like late teen, you know, kind of high school, college years, um, went to U of M. So I got my undergrad in psychology from U of M. And it was during that time that I met the handsome, handsome man that is now my husband. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's kind of what took me to that point in life. Yeah. So, um, so you met Mike in college mm -hmm. and did you guys get married after college or what was this? storyline on that we uh, so we we actually we went to different schools we met because I was dating his best friend at the time and so we all kind of ran in the same group of friends you know we hung out we were best friends for a long time and then his relationship ended my relationship ended and it wasn't we were best friends like honest to goodness best friends and then one day he came to me and said I need to talk to you and basically told me he was in love with me and I was like dude like you're my best friend that's so weird 
And then it was probably a couple months later that things developed. And I was like, oh, I actually think I might love you too. So thus started our actual relationship. Um, We dated for a couple of years and then we ended up separating for a couple of years. Um, Again, I hit like another kind of transition point in my life and wasn't quite sure what I was doing and and what I wanted. Um, So we ended up splitting up, which I thought it was going to be completely permanent. I thought that was it. Like it was a great, you know, two year college relationship. And then it would be done during that time. Mike joined the military. So he was stationed in California. Um, And then two years later, we ended up reconnecting and I had kind of grown in a lot of ways that I needed to. And at that time, it was really evident that there was still something between us. And yeah, we ended up dating again. And that's a whole other really cool, crazy story of how I ended up moving from Michigan to California with really no notice. I had just graduated college, had my teaching degree, ended up reconnecting with Mike, found a job, took the job and booked my plane ticket without even telling him. So, you know, on his end, it was like, hey, we're reconnecting. On my end, it was like, I just took a job and I'm moving across the country to be with you. So like, I hope you're really in this thing. Um, So yeah, I ended up moving to California where he was stationed at the time. And then like two months later, we were married. So we were really young and everything ended up moving really quickly once we reconnected again. And that was 15 years ago. So it's been 15 years of beautiful, wild, crazy, wonderful life together. That is amazing. Everyone at our, or most people at our church know that I love the Hallmark Channel. I mean, I'm not ashamed. I, I like, it's like on in high rotation at my house. Like I record like three or four shows every week and me and my kids just at any given moment, sit down, watch Hamra. So I love that the story is generally the same. It's the boy uh-huh. and girl at some point in their younger years and they get separated college or life or one of them leaves and breaks up and breaks their heart. And then like, so I love those stories. And there was like four or five moments of those stories in what you just said. <laughs> yeah, that is one hundred percent our story, basically, and it's it's crazy. And yeah, there's all sorts of other details in there, but uh, yeah, it's basically like a whole. Hey, you're my movie. best friend. What you you feel <laughs> this way? I don't know about this. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> the, then the grand gesture of I'm forsaking everything in my life and I'm going to where you're at. Wait, what? I don't want you to leave your hopes and dreams. You're my hope to my dreams. All of it. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry to get sidetracked here, but I just couldn't help myself. Like, the Hallmark Channel fan in me just ignited hearing your story. I love it. <laughs> great. Yeah, that's that's basically it in a nutshell. <laughs> that's cool. So how does like, so now um, at our church, you are known as what you are, Pastor Sian. So I haven't heard anything in your story yet, um, in your childhood, your upbringing, even um, college or anything that suggests you were on the path to who we know you now as Pastor Sion. So where does that part of the story start? 